Hi, I'm Scott Wilkinson. And I'm Barb Smith. You know, asking good questions can be a challenge. For example, has anything like this ever happened to you? Do you think Ammon enjoyed being taken prisoner? Anyone? Answer. Brother Mitch. Do you what? think he enjoyed being taken prisoner? Ammon? Um, I don't think so. Sometimes they ask you a question and it's just so obvious that sometimes you just feel like chuckling about it because, you know, you don't even feel like answering it. Well, as you can see, not all questions are engaging. But effective questions can be a significant way to help students discover gospel truths. Questions can be asked that lead students to search the scriptures for information, analyze what they are studying, and then help them apply what they're studying in their own lives. In this segment, we'll examine questions that lead students to search for information. Search for information questions are more likely to send students into the scriptures if they avoid yes-no responses and if they avoid obvious answers. Search for information questions require the students to look in the scripture text or study aids for answers. Let's visit an early morning seminary teacher as she is preparing for tomorrow's class. This is Sister Adair. She is writing a few search for information questions to help her students study Doctrine and Covenants section 1 verses 1 through 4. Uh, let's see. Will there be anyone that escapes the voice of the Lord? No. Yeah. Yes, no question. What if I tried? Who is the voice of the Lord speaking to in verses 1 and 2? Ryan. He's speaking to everyone, no matter who or where they are. Hey, look at verse 3. Who is pierced with much sorrow? The rebellious. Hmm, obvious. But what if I tried? What does verse 3 say will happen to the rebellious? Emily. It says that they will be pierced with much sorrow and their secret acts shall be revealed. All right, verse 4. Who will hear the voice of warning? All people. Not bad. But what if I asked, how is the Lord going to give his warning to all people? Matt. It says it's going to be by the mouth of his disciples. Now that Sister Adair has a few questions that search for information, she will prepare analysis and application questions. Take a few minutes and write some search for information questions. And be prepared to share what you've written. Welcome back. We've looked at questions that help students search for information. Now let's look at questions that help students analyze what they are studying. Analysis questions require students to think and ponder the significance of what they're studying. These questions are effective when they begin with phrases like, how is it that? Or why do you think? Phrasing questions like this can help students think about the meaning of the scriptures. Let's visit a class and actually see how they're using analysis questions. This class is studying Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verses 1 through 4. And the teacher's brother Sackett. Chosen in the last days. How is it that the voice of the Lord is unto all people? Katie? I think through his missionaries, they spread a lot of the word throughout all the countries. Are there any other ways? Chelsea? I think during general conference, a lot of people who don't get to hear the word of the Lord get to hear what he has to say to them. Thanks very much. Look at verse 3. Why are the rebellious sorrowful? Ben. Because their iniquities shall be spoken upon the housetops. Great. Anybody else? Cindy. Analysis questions help students think about the meaning of Scripture. Also, analysis questions oftentimes have more than one answer. Let's listen to a couple more. That he couldn't describe because he didn't know what it was. How is it? that their iniquities are going to be spoken on the housetops. What do you think? I think it's just using that to say that all people will know of it because when Christ comes, it won't be secret anymore and everything they've done will be published to everyone else and everyone will know. Excellent. Verse 4. If you look at verse 4, how is it that the disciples the Lord has chosen are going to be able 
to tell everyone. Katie. I think if the gospel has been in your life for generations and it's passed down, I think parents can be a warning voice to you and that's why we should listen to them. Your parents? <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Kara. These are all good answers because they're what the students think the verses mean. Now, here's a question for you. Why do you think it's important to ask search for information questions before you ask analysis questions? Good analysis questions, Scott. I think you're catching on. <laughs> well, thank you, Barb. See if you can tell which of the following questions are search questions and which are analysis questions. Why would it be important for every single person to hear the voice of the Lord? What phrase in verse 1 says that God is watching us? Why do you think the rebellious do not respond to the voice of the Lord? Okay, now according to verse 2, besides hearing the voice of the Lord, what will happen? How is the voice of the Lord in verse 2 the same or different than the voice of warning in verse 4? According to verse 3, how will the rebellious feel when their wickedness is known? What does it mean to hearken to the voice of the Lord? What is the difference between those who hear the voice of the Lord and those who do not? Take a few moments and write down some analysis questions that build on the search for information questions you wrote after segment one. Then take the opportunity to share your questions with your in-service group. Hello again. Now that we've looked at search and analysis questions, let's take a look at questions that help students apply what they're studying. Some application questions often begin with phrases like, why should, or what did you learn from, or even what difference would it make if, look for examples of these phrases in the following questions from Doctrine and Covenants section one. Brother Sackett, for example, could phrase an application question like this one. What difference would it make if you were hearing the voice of the Lord in your life? Or he might ask, what did you learn from these verses that you could apply in your life? Or he could even phrase it in this way. Why should hearing the voice of the Lord be a priority in your life? These application questions require the students to look at their lives and what they might do to make their lives better. Elder Henry B. Eyring identified an additional application question. He suggests that we invite students to search their memories for feelings. This type of application question might begin with this phrase, when have you felt? Elder Eyring attests that this type of question is likely to invite inspiration. For example, a question like this one. So what difference would it make if you were hearing the voice of the Lord in your life? Might become a question like this one. When have you felt that you have heard the voice of the Lord in your life? While these questions might sound alike, one causes students to think about their lives now, and the other causes students to search their spiritual memories for feelings. Both are valid application questions, but one caution. Be careful about asking students to discuss things that are sensitive or too personal. Watch these next few examples of search, analysis, and application questions. Notice how the series of questions builds to application. According to verse 2, Besides hearing the voice of the Lord, what else will happen to every person? How is it that a voice can cause eyes to see and hearts to be penetrated? What difference does it make if your heart is penetrated by the voice of the Lord? The important thing about this example is to search, analyze, and then apply. Remember, students can't apply if they don't understand. But it is okay to ask multiple search questions and multiple analysis questions before you ask an application question. Let's watch a few more examples. According to verse 3, what will cause the rebellious to be pierced with much sorrow? Why do you think the rebellious will have their secret acts revealed? How is it that the rebellious today 
do not seem concerned that their iniquities shall be spoken upon the housetops. What difference does it make if you're among the rebellious or the righteous? Take a few minutes now to write application questions that build upon the search and analysis questions you have written previously. Then take the opportunity to share your questions with your in-service group. Hello again. In this segment, we'll consider a few techniques that are important to have a good discussion. Let's look in on Sister Adair's early morning class. As you watch the following discussion, see how many of the techniques listed on pages 38 and 39 of Teaching the Gospel you can identify. Thanks, Anne. Who is the Lord speaking to in verses 1 and 2? Matt. It says that he's speaking unto all men everywhere. If that's true, then how is it possible that the voice of the Lord can be to all men? Molly. Well, he can give it to them by, um, by his servants or by other people, they can carry it to them. Okay. Please. Another way we hear the voice of the Lord is as answers to our prayers. Talk about that a little bit. Sometimes we're praying about things that we're not understanding or having a difficult time with in our life, and it comes as an answer to a prayer and really helps you out. Can you guys add on to that at all? Shanna, please. We can share the gospel with others, um, especially our friends, just by sharing what we know and we can share it with our friends. And how can we share it with our friends? What are some things we can do? Jonathan. Just to add on to that, I think just by being a good example, if you have such good integrity and everything, then, you know, they may ask, you know, about the religion. So with that, why is it important, do you think, that the voice of the Lord is heard by every person? And God loves us so much. He wants a, all of us to have the, a chance to hear and to learn more about Him and for us to be happy in this life. So what difference does it make when you do hear the voice of the Lord in your life? And I think it strengthens your testimony and your faith when you have that witness, I guess, that it strengthens your faith to do those things more and you're more diligent in the things that help you hear the voice of the Lord. Let's go just a step further then. When have you felt the voice of the Lord in your life? Please, Molly. Well, one time when I was just going through something hard, um, just kneeling and saying my prayers and just feeling that peace and knowing that Heavenly Father loves me. It gives you strength to just say, okay, I can deal with it and I can keep going. Great comment. Jonathan. Uh, I think one of the most powerful ways is through music. Um, when I, I went to a devotional once and the prophet came and um, we were just singing a simple hymn and just that moment testified to me. I mean, it strengthened my testimony that he was a prophet of God. I've never felt the spirit so strong it was, and I couldn't even finish singing the hymn. You know, Gene R. Cook, he said that one of the best ways we can feel the Spirit and hear the voice of the Lord in our lives is through music. And when we listen to good music, that definitely happens. Remember, that's one of the last things that the Savior did before he went to Gethsemane. With all of his best friends, they gathered together, they passed the sacrament, he washed their feet, and then the very last thing before he left to do the very difficult act of the atonement was they all sang a hymn. It's a great, insightful comment, Jonathan. Anyone else? One caution, students won't share these kinds of answers if they have any suspicion that they will be ridiculed or criticized. But also remember, we have been counseled about asking questions that are too personal. We need to be sensitive and allow sacred experiences to remain private. Take a few minutes now to plan a discussion. You may wish to use the questions you have written for other scripture blocks. Then present your discussion to your in-service group. 